so much for watching the video so far. For this segment of the video, I thought it would be fun and interesting to have a chat with George, one of the co-founders of Cloud Cannon. So yeah, George, do you want to just give a quick little introduction to yourself? Sure. Uh, I am, I'm George. I am a Dunedin local that started the uh, Cloud Cannon with a mate from high school. Um, and now we're here with uh, 22 people on staff and we build a online content management system. I first heard about Cloud Cannon through Otago Uni's comp side brochure because they were talking about success stories of students and they mentioned Cloud Cannon. I was like, okay, that's, that's pretty cool. So do you want to take us through how you guys began this whole Cloud Cannon company? Like, why did you guys begin Cloud Cannon? Yeah, um, so we... we both Mike and I, my co-founder, uh, we were building websites for people as uh, to make a bit of extra money as students. Uh, and when we were building those websites, we really liked the control we got from uh, building websites with HTML and CSS. Um, but we didn't like any of the content management systems that were out there. We really wanted to be focused on what's called static websites. Um, so we started toying around with something like that uh, during uni, uh, built a product called Flex CMS, and then um, about a year out of uni after we'd been working at a, another place, we decided that we wanted to start from scratch right. um, because there was a lot of technical debt, there was a lot of things going on, um, and all of this was done just in our bedrooms up to this point. Um, so we kept working on way on that. And it started off with Dropbox connected HTML websites. You could add this little class of editable to the HTML and you could share that to someone else. Uh, they would be able to edit that content straight on the page. That would save to uh, Cloud Cannon and sync back to Dropbox. So you can make all your changes and just design whatever you want as long as it had HTML and CSS. Um, we quickly found that that was like uh, quite limiting in terms of what you could build on purely static websites. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we kept working away on that. We went up to a startup accelerator in Wellington uh, called Lightning Lab. Is it with Creative HQ? Yeah, that's the one. Um, and from there we managed to raise investment, mm -hmm. uh, which gave us the capital to be able to start paying ourselves. 
Um, and once we started paying ourselves, we hired a few people. Um, and we were still working out of a bedroom. So it was only until three years ago that we got an office here in Dunedin um, right. and started hiring people more aggressively. And so we went from uh, three people to 22 in three years. Right. Plenty of lessons. I mean, that, that's kind of what keeps me going. Is as long as as long as the company keeps going and I'm continually interested and I'm always learning, I can feel that as a dual balance of building the company that I'm also building myself. Nice. So the lessons that you learn is equally as valuable as the company you're building. Right. Yeah. So you're learning lessons from building a company, and you're also learning lessons about you and self. So it's like personal growth as well. Yeah. Um, both Mike and I both studied computer science, mm -hmm. um, so there has been has been a lot of learning about running a business mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. figuring out the different aspects of just creating a product other than the technical side. Right. Uh, yeah. So Cloud Cannon is obviously quite established now, and I personally got my role as an intern here through this local program called Job Done, and so yeah, here I am right now. So. As a founder, I'd just like to know what sorts of qualities do you look for in potential employees, especially students or fresh grads? Yeah, so um, on the job done program, mm -hmm. I went through that twice mm -hmm. and worked for two companies as well. So I'm a big advocate for that program. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of who we hire, um, it's mostly about attitude. Mm -hmm. um, Good grades do go a long way, like if I see an academic transcript which has like A's all through it, um, that's generally a good measure of effort, um, but it's not necessarily the biggest thing. If someone has um, some different grades on their, um, on their transcript, it, it just shows me that they probably weren't as interested in those papers. Um, but otherwise, it's mostly about passion. Um, if someone can write a really good cover letter, that's really good. Um, communication is pretty key. So if you can communicate uh, your passion for working for that for my company, mm -hmm. then I'll be able to use that as a starting point to have a chat. And if I know I can talk to you about general concepts, and those concepts can be graphs during that interview process, then I feel really confident that I can train um, on the things needed to use my platform. Mm -hmm. um, and because we are creating a platform, it's really important that we are able to teach people how to use it. So having people that can um, appreciate the process of learning is really important. How much emphasis do you place on extracurriculars? I guess uh, personal projects, definitely within the developer realm, mm -hmm. is a really big. Um, I think if someone went through university and only did the projects that they were given yes or no answers to within or and like skeleton code from their instructors or um, uh, tutors, then they would they would be missing that fundamental grasp of what it is to conceptualize something and make it happen, okay. um, including figuring out which frameworks you want to use um, and what you actually want to build, mm -hmm. um, which is often a big part of if someone has that extra extracurricular of doing their own projects and being entrepreneurial, I know they'll be good at an early stage company. Right. Um, but then there's the, also the other side of like, do you have a hobby? Um, that's like a, a life outside programming. Yeah, <laughs> which is good because if you've got that hobby, you're likely going to be. Um, yeah, if you've got a healthy work-life balance, you're generally going to be more efficient at work. Right. Okay. Now, last question. Cool. What advice would you give your uni self? Yeah, I, I guess I would say for myself, yeah. um, I only did comp sci papers. I did the odd necessary English paper or business mm -hmm. paper. Mm -hmm. um, I would do more business papers just to get that understanding of what. I mean, I, I had a pretty good understanding of how to build a company, but if I had more fundamentals and created more of a network, I think across more disciplines, 
would have been a really big advantage. So essentially like broadening your horizons and try new things while you're in uni instead of just focusing on your major and trying to get through that. Yeah, but saying that I was really happy I did every single paper I did at Comp Sci. I just wish I had more time to do more papers. Okay, cool. Thank you so much for your time, George, for this interview. And thank you so much to you for watching this video as well. We'll see you in the next one. Bye! See ya! Yes! Okay. Nice. Very good. Oh no, it didn't record.